three times the explosions in PvE and the fastest consistent two crit one body available on a hand cannon. With the option to two tap, this is the word of Crota from Crota's End. And I've got some crazy ways for you to craft it. Obtainable only from the final encounter of the raid, the Word of Crota is a precision frame hand cannon, an archetype that's typically plagued with low range and damage across all activities of Destiny 2. However, with this ridiculously awesome perk pool, we're going to change that. And I'm telling you, if you have avoided 180s, this could be the one that changes it for you. In both PvE and PvP, this is the first time ever I'm having a blast with a 180. The Word of Crota has so many never-before-seen perks and perk combos, it's hard to walk away with a bad one. That said, there are a few I've found to stand above the rest, so let's start with the stats to understand the weapon, and then the perks and PvP and PvE god rolls to craft or look out for. Stats-wise, the Word of Crota is very similar to Posterity, which is a great thing, because I think many will agree Posterity is one of, if not the best 180 hand cannon we have in Destiny 2. We've got great stability, aim assist, handling, and recoil direction for the archetype, but the Word of Crota lags behind in one stat in particular. It has a range stat of 31 compared to Posterity's 39. Keep in mind that in-game this is only 0.37 meters of difference in damage falloff, so knowing this I played around with a max range, full bore, accurized, range masterwork roll, and I didn't even notice the damage drop off distance from my roll that only had accurized. I actually preferred my role with a bit more stability and handling. So what I'm saying is, the range difference didn't matter that much in comparison to the rest of the 180s. You'll definitely notice a huge range difference from normal 140 hand cannons like Palindrome, AS Luna, and Exalted Truth that all start at around 50 range. But I've come to realize that 180 precision start to click for me when I treat them less like short range hand cannons and more like long range sidearms. That's when they come alive. I just let full auto take over, sometimes even like an auto rifle, and the word of Crota is so stable, it just stays right where I put it. Don't worry though, we've still got plans for the range in the perks. In PvP, your primary damage options that will determine the rest of your build are Focus Fury, Precision Instrument, Sword Logic, Rampage, or Adrenaline Junkie. The real choice showdown here being Precision Instrument versus Sword Logic. I'll get to why the others are overshadowed, but to explain that, let's talk about the exciting stuff first. I'll show my cards right away. Sword Logic is my pick that determines the rest of the build. Now, stick with me, this gets crazy. It's not just the buff giving Word of Crota a 3-tap. You might have heard plenty about that already. It's for the way it combines with other things to give you a forgiving 3-tap that is able to be looped indefinitely, and if you're lucky, even bring you to a 0.33 second TTK 2-tap. Let me show you how. Many are calling Sword Logic the better Rampage, but I find this isn't the best way to think about it. Rampage adds stacks to a buff for higher damage. Sword Logic has levels, not stacks, and the level of buff you get is determined by the type of enemy you eliminate. So I find it more helpful to think of Sword Logic like Golden Tricorn, which is found on other 180s and also has levels times 1 and times 2 depending on the actions you take. But Sword Logic is way more practical and automatic than Golden Tricorn is. To simplify it further, for this PvP section, I'm going to only talk about how Sword Logic operates in this sandbox, because in PvE it has 4 levels and different buff amounts, it only has 2 buffs in PvP, and that's what we'll focus on in this section. So in PvP, you get Sword Logic times 2 for eliminating a Guardian, and times 3 for eliminating a Guardian in their super, those are the only two. The times 2 for defeating a normal Guardian gives you an instant 20% buff that lasts for 7.5 seconds in PvP. This is 2 whole seconds and 10% more damage than Rampage times 1, and 5% more damage than Golden Tricorn. You may think that small bit of extra damage isn't important because other 180s with Golden Tricorn can 3-tap with their 15% buff as well, but the 20% buff from Sword Logic allows you not only to get a 3-tap, but also a 2-crit one body on opponents up to 5 resilience. Neither Golden Tricorn or Rampage Times 1 can do that. Even still, up to 5 resil isn't good enough for me, so by running just 2 Void Surge mods and a Reaper mod, I can pick up an orb whenever I get my first Alim to bump Sword Logic up enough to 2 crit one body any resil. 
This right here, this forgiveness of a three tap is what makes the word of Crota special in PvP. And it's what's got me hooked. I've gotten so many kills that I would not have got if I was only getting three taps with crits. And it gets better. Sword Logic times two can be refreshed back to the top of the timer every time you get another elimination. It doesn't move up levels like Rampage, it just stays at times two the whole time and refreshes your 7.5 second timer. 7.5 seconds is plenty of time for you to get to your next target compared to the 4.5 seconds of Rampage or 5 seconds of Kill Clip. Harmony is another common perk that gives you a 7 second 20%, but it can't be loot because once your time's up with that weapon, you're done. On top of all this, Sword Logic can be stowed with the weapon while you have the perk active. It doesn't deactivate Sword Logic. So if you're in a primary fight where you got Sword Logic up, then you get pushed and you need to whip out your shotgun or fusion, you can safely do so and return to your Sword Logic buff to keep slaying. So that's a very forgiving three tap that's activated on just one elimination that works on any resilience level that can be looped to continue your streak with every elim and that can be stowed and brought back out without deactivating the perk and it just keeps going further the two tap real fast before i explain this if you've enjoyed the content from this video or any of my others be sure to leave a comment and check to make sure you're subscribed okay the two tap and an even easier three tap now this will be infrequent but it's so so crazy and potentially more applicable than you might think because you don't have to change anything with your setup other two tap, one tap damage stacking builds require you to change your build and play style to even do them once. But this could just happen if you just see the opportunity. And if it does happen, you can keep that two tap going for a very long time. Okay, so not only can you activate a 20% buff with Sword Logic times two, you can activate a 35% buff at Sword Logic times three by slaying a guardian in their super. And the buff lasts for 10.5 seconds and can be refreshed through normal guardian kills this creates an easy two body one crit three tap or a two tap up to eight resil with a warlock rift or even a two tap against any resil with a buff like weapons of light allowing you to flow around the map with your two taps until your weapons of light runs out and even then you're back to your crazy good three tap that's ridiculous and could easily just randomly happen in quick play if you run through a bubble and knock a super. Or if you're the titan yourself, you can just hold on to your super and pop it once you get a kill on a super. The only other thing that can do the fast 182 tap is golden tricorn times 2 and you have to jump through so many intentional hoops to make that happen. Plus, Golden Tricorn times 2 can't be looped on kills, only abilities, so you never have it up for long in PvP even if you do get it. Sword Logic's 35% buff after a super can be refreshed by just slaying normal guardians, and it brings the buff back all the way up to 10.5 seconds. That's ridiculous! After I math this out, I looped the 2-tap buff for 36 seconds on my very first in-game test, so yeah, infrequent. But if you got it going, oh my gosh, who knows how long you could keep it. Please tag me in the clip on Twitter or something. All of this, not just the gimmick stuff, but the very forgiving three tap that can be looped with a single kill is why Precision Instrument hails in comparison to Sword Logic. Precision Instrument is the new perk that stacks above every shot you deal damage, up to 25% total damage buff. You don't get that full damage right away, Every time you deal damage, you get a portion, one sixth of that total 25% damage added to your next precision hit. So the first headshot will be 60 damage like normal. And your next one within 1.25 seconds will be 62.5 damage from a 4.16% buff. Then the next bullet will have an 8.33% buff and it will continue on until you max out at 25% or you stop hitting shots within that 1.25 seconds. Here's where some are making the mistake of calculating their precision instrument three tap. They're calculating from the damage of the third bullet and thinking it can three tap any resilience level, but that's not how this works. It escalates every shot, and so you have to manually account for every bullet. Fortunately for you, I've done that and can tell you it only lets you three tap up to two resil. That's just not acceptable to me to risk a four tap versus a three tap on this archetype. Even if you're playing quick play and pick up an orb and you're running three surge mods, you'll still only three tap up to seven resil and you'd have to hit every headshot and find a way to get charged. Even with Radiant and Surge Mods and Precision Instrument on your last two crits, you would only one body two crit up to a certain resil. 
sword logic is so much less complicated. Wasn't, wasn't that a mess? Like, just let me finish an opponent in quick play with a single bullet, and now I'm three tapping everyone. Pick up an orb, and now I'm one body and two crit in any order against any Razil, which, from my playtime, happened in a lot of different orders. So Precision Instrument can't hold a candle to Sword Logic, even if you can get some sort of three tap right out of the gate. Okay, let's get the other perk options out of the way and craft this thing. I'm stripping out Focus Fury because it requires so much accuracy and engagement time before activating, half your mag hitting precision shots before you get the damage boost. It is a great boost, 20%, but that's how much Sword Logic will offer for just one kill. We talked Rampage already, and the only thing left for PvP is Adrenaline Junkie, which can get a nice 33.3% buff with a grenade kill, but the timer's only 4.5 seconds. Again, just no comparison to Sword Logic. Yeah, there's Demolitionist in Adrenaline Junkie, but this one second TTK base weapon isn't the place for it. You can find that better somewhere else. I have to mention too, there is a ridiculous combo of Dragonfly, Destabilizing Rounds, and the Raid Origin trait Curse Thrall. I'll talk about it more for PvE, but in PvP, this triple explosion could easily eliminate any enemy in close proximity. You just have to get a melee kill beforehand to get it all ready to go at once. Pretty hilarious meme build. Okay, now that we've established why we want to build around Sword Logic, here's the full PvP god roll Word of Crota. Like I said at the beginning, I felt like range didn't matter too much, but also, the weapon is pretty stable as is. It's a precision frame, which automatically has a more vertical recoil pattern. I also said I found the most success using this as a long range sidearm, not a short range hand cannon. So I'm just going to evenly bump up each stat without taking away from any of the others. Small bore is the perfect barrel for this. Then I'll run accurized rounds to bump the range again. For the masterwork, I'm gonna go with handling. That leaves it still pretty low at 46, but I'll put dexterity mods and targeting mods to make the gun a little snappier, and this has felt pretty solid for me. Now, even with all these boosts, the range is pretty low at 50 for the first elimination, the starting place for mini 140s. But as I said in the stats, it doesn't move that much further in damage distance if I go higher. What does make it go further is choosing Killing Wind in the third column. I know many are going to have their eyes on Rangefinder and Enlightened Action as go-to stat perks, but Rangefinder, while still having an accuracy boost, no longer increases actual damage falloff distance. And Enlightened Action, while an awesome handling and reload buff for every bullet hit, only lasts for two seconds. I need something to synergize after the kill for as much time as possible. Don't get me wrong, these are still great perks. Enlightened Action was the first roll I got on Word of Crota, and there are times when I get enough shots off for my handling and reload speed to max out at nearly 100 each in a normal engagement. If I was just going for winning that initial fight, either Enlightened or Rangefinder would have been great. But Killing Wind offers you 50 mobility, 40 handling, 20 range, and a 5% increased damage falloff distance for 5 seconds after a kill. 5.5 seconds if enhanced. That's a ton of buffs for a decent amount of time, and after the rangefinder zoom nerf, it's one of the only perks in the game that can actually extend your damage range. Hands down, Killing Wind is the perk to synergize with Sword Logic. On top of all this, I'd run a targeting weapon mod and at least two targeting adjuster mods to boost the aim assist a bit more, since the recoil direction is already 100. So when I get a kill and begin my 3 tap streak, all my stats are boosted to 70 range, 66 stability, 86 handling, with 91 aim assist, and 100 recoil direction. I need y'all to take a look at these stats for a minute because these are the stats of a fast 1 body 2 crit 180 hand cannon. This is my PvP god roll word of Crota. Now, some PvE madness. I kid you not, I've started maining Word of Crota if I need a primary energy weapon. I don't know that I'd call it the best at anything, but I would definitely call it viable and more than anything, fun. Which, isn't that what we're gaming for? For PvE, I'm immediately eyeing Demolitionist and Adrenaline Junkie. If you've got a grenade heavy build, you can go to town with that combo. You can double down on the synergy if you've got mods or aspects that let your grenade kills regen your melee energy, because you can use a ranged melee to take out adds and proc the raid origin trait, Curse Thrall. This gives you a Curse Thrall explosion on every kill with Word of Crota for 7.5 seconds, and 15 seconds if you're using the seasonal mod for enhanced origin traits. Heads up, 
Cursed Thrall will be procced even if you get your melee kill while you're on a different weapon. You can swap back to Word of Crota and it's there waiting for you to explode some stuff. That's some great ease of use. Next, we've got Repulsor Brace and Destabilizing Rounds. I mean, how could you not be attracted to that? You can run any subclass, doesn't have to be Void, still get Void Explosions on kills, and then when you kill the enemies around that are destabilized, you proc Repulsor Brace for the Overshield. Fantastic combo, and was one of the things I was constantly running in the Lamps encounter for Crota's End. I just never had to worry about anything with this weapon. You should know, Age Old Bond also has this combo, and it's great there, but destabilizing rounds on this hand cannon will also explode with the Curse Thrall Origin trait, so you've got double explosion options. Not only can you double down, you can triple down on explosions with Dragonfly, Destabilizing Rounds, and Curse Thrall. I feel like this is peak destiny, right? Like, how much better can it get than a triple explosion? Now, I was really hopeful that Destabilizing Rounds might chain reaction with Curse Thrall and Dragonfly for unlimited explosions, but it doesn't quite work that way due to the Destabilizing Rounds cooldown timer. However, the Destabilizing Rounds does sometimes apply before Dragonfly. And so occasionally, you'll get the Dragonfly Explosion to set off the destabilized targets near the initial explosion for four total explosions. I know this will never be PvE meta, but come on, that's hilarious. Subsistence is an option if you want to mow through targets. I was using that with Precision Instrument to stack up damage on my headshots, since even if I slayed lower tier enemies with body shots, I would still stack up my Precision Instrument damage for when I hit crits. But out of the damage options, I surprisingly like Rampage and Focus Fury the best. Rampage for adds because it was easy to get to that 33.1% damage buff while clearing a room, but Focus Fury if I was using the hand cannon to hit larger enemies as well. Focus Fury is a 20% buff that procs when you hit half your mag's crits, and it stays active for 11 seconds, so you don't need to hit multiple targets or kills, just the one big target. Plus, if you keep hitting crits during that 11 seconds, it will reset the timer and let you keep laying into the enemy. That really surprised me how you could just keep refreshing the perk and keep that 20% damage up all the time, even after a reload. I liked it a ton more than I thought I would. And that brings me to my two PvE god rolls for Word of Crota. If you're going ag clear and safety, think lamps and Crota's in, I'd go Repulsor Brace and Destabilizing Rounds. It works on any class, and even better on a Void Hunter with Stylish Executioner for constant invis. For the rest, I'd go Fluted for more handling, Flared Magwell for the reload, and a Handling Masterwork to just get it feeling nice all the way around. It'll have low range, but you use this thing like an ad clearing sidearm, and you'll feel extremely safe and have a bit of fun too. If you want to boost the fun, replace Repulsor Race with Dragonfly and have a field day with the Triple Explosions. The second craft is Enlightened Action and Focus Fury. This is for using Word of Crota against larger targets, or if you know you'll be running your Falcons and just want more damage to your shots. Focus Fury gives you that 20% buff that can be constantly refreshed regardless of how many adds are around, and Enlightened Action immediately starts granting you tons of handling and reload as soon as your first bullet hits. All the way to 100 handling and 100 reload. I was really impressed by this one also. I'd still run Fluted and Flared Magwell for when Enlightened isn't active, but I'd swap the Masterwork to range so we don't worry about damage fall off as much. Weapon mod will be your choice. I hated 180s before Word of Crota. I can't even tell you the last time I used one and now I'm genuinely thinking of adding this to my primary weapon rotation that I pair with fusions in PvP, and whipping one out to have fun in PvE as well. Let me know what you think. This has been Legolas Flash, until next time, GG.